reality itself becomes enigmatic and simulating. But the unintelligibility of it is not mystic, nor romantic, is rather ironic. The paroxysmic stage of a system usually coincides with its parodic stage. Irony is the last sign that comes from the secret core of the object, the pure, however indirect, expression of reversibility of things. Here again, it's not a question of romantic or subjective irony, but of an objective irony linked to the radical material illusion of the world. Things have been so accelerated that processes are no longer inscribed in a linear temporality, in a linear unfolding of history. Nothing moves any longer from cause to effect. All causality is neutralized, transversalized by inversions of meaning, perverse events, ironic reversals. In the stream of accelerations, things enter into incredible turbulences, into self-potentialization in, as in cult, chaotic effects. And this deregulation of the system is actually the work of the system itself. Just as Marx said of the proletariat that uh, its emancipation must be the work of the proletariat itself, today uh, we can say that the destabilization of the system is the work of the system itself. The system is the operator of its own annihilation. Pushed to an extreme sophistication, the systems implode by themselves, by an effect that has nothing to do with the action of any critical subject coming from outside to subvert or destroy it. This type of critical action still belongs to the era when we believed that life could be changed by changing the systems. Today we are dealing with a process of achievement of uh, ultra-realization, I would say, and automatic reversal. That's this I call objective irony. This probability, this very fatality of a system, that the more they advance toward their own perfection, the more they deconstruct themselves. This logic is at work in all religious, scientific, economic, and political systems, as much as in material production and information. The excess of information, we said already, short circuits itself, itself, telescopes to a point where nothing is left. Saturated by media, we no longer deal with any real information, with any historic event. And the same with modern science. The more the object is hunched down to the extreme by experimental procedures, the more it invents strategies of counterfeit, evasion, disguise, disappearance. It's like a virus. It escapes indefinitely by inventing versatile counter strategies. We must enjoy the irony of that. Insofar as it breaks, our hegemony and the foolish pretension of a subject to impose laws to the world. For even physical laws are the subject's impos imposition of the world. But when the universe begins to disobey these laws, this dissidence becomes paradoxical and ironic. No critical thought of the rationalist type no logic of cause and effect can face such phenomena. But I do not attempt to transform the object into a super subject. But it happens as if something definitively escaped us. And I stress it definitively, for it is not the case that things escape because our science and technologies would not be yet advanced far enough. Just the contrary, the more we perfect the protocols of experimentation, the more the object steals away and finally becomes undecidable. And don't ask where it has gone. 
simply the object is what escapes the subject. We cannot say anything else. We cannot go beyond, since our position is still that of the subject and of rational discourse. How can we do otherwise? Anyway, we can no longer allege an insufficient development of our scientific, intellectual and or mental apparatus. For this apparatus has given all that it could give. It has even passed beyond its own rationality. I cannot tell you exactly in terms of seconds the decimal point of Planck's constant beyond which there will never be any possible knowledge of the cosmos in the first million seconds after the Big Bang. That is a definitively foreclosed issue. There light doesn't exist, there the universe is opaque, Planck's constant absolute, no representation is possible. This part is not even repressed or hidden, it's a definitive horizon of events in the physical sense of the world uh, that is beyond which nothing makes sense. Metaphorically, it may be said that at the core of every human being and everything, there is such a definitively inaccessible secret. This is the vital illusion that Nietzsche spoke about, the glass wall of truth and knowledge. From our rational point of view, all this may appear rather disparate, yeah? and could even justify something like pessimism. But the, from the point of view of singularity, of otherness, of a secret, of seduction, on the contrary, it's our only, our last chance. In this respect, the perfect crime is a book of radiant optimism. By way of conclusion, I would like to quote a very mysterious phrase of Heidegger. When we look into the ambiguous essence of technology, we behold the constellation, the stellar chaos, the stellar moving of a secret. This proposition has no referential value, but rather an enigmatic one.